In this video, we're going to talk about Poissier's law and how it relates to pressure and fluid flow. Now, let's consider a pipe that contains a fluid with no viscosity. If there's no viscosity, then there's no internal friction. And as a result, the fluid can move with constant speed without any net force. So the net force is zero. Now, pressure and force are related. So if the net force is zero, then the pressure difference has to be zero. Pressure is force divided by area. So the pressure at point A, if it's 100,000 pascals, and if the pressure at point B is the same, then the fluid will continue to flow at constant speed if there's no friction. Now, in real life situations, we know there's some level of internal friction. And so in order for the fluid to travel at constant speed, there must be some sort of pressure difference. And that situation is described by Poissier's law. So Poissier's law states that the volume flow rate is equal to pi times the radius to the fourth power multiplied by the pressure difference divided by 8 times the coefficient of viscosity represented by the symbol eta multiplied by the length of the pipe. So let's consider points A and B. L represents the length between those two points of interest. At point A we have a pressure 1, point B pressure 2. R is the radius of the pipe and Eta is the coefficient of viscosity, which is based on the fluid. So you have to look that up in the table. Now the volume flow rate, delta V over delta T, in some textbooks is represented by the symbol Q. And keep in mind, the volume flow rate is the area times the flow speed, or the velocity. In order to apply Poissier's law, some conditions have to be met. So first, the fluid has to have laminar flow. So what that means is that the fluid has to be traveling straight. So it can't be crossing over with another section of the fluid. It simply travels straight. So it can't be, uh, there can't be any turbulent flow. So it can't be moving too fast where it's not traveling straight anymore. The second is that we need to have an incompressible fluid. So what does that mean? That the fluid is incompressible. That means that the density of the fluid is constant. The density doesn't change. Now going back to the equation, where we saw that the volume flow rate is pi r to the fourth power times the change in pressure, p1 minus p2, divided by 8 times eta times l. We can see that if we increase the radius of the pipe, the flow rate will increase. Now, if you double the radius of the pipe, the flow rate will increase by 2 to the 4th power. As we could see, Q is proportional to the 4th power of R. So if we triple the radius, the flow rate will increase by 3 to the 4th power, which is 81. So the volume flow rate is highly dependent on a cross-sectional radius of the pipe. Now, it also depends on the coefficient of viscosity. If you increase the coefficient of viscosity, the volume flow rate will decrease. So for very viscous liquids like honey and syrup, a greater pressure is required in order to keep the fluid at a constant flow rate, to keep it moving at a certain speed. So the flow rate is inversely related to the coefficient of viscosity. And it's also inversely related to the length of the pipe, because that's in the bottom of the equation. However, it's directly related to the pressure difference. So if you increase the pressure difference between two points, the volume flow rate will increase. Now this information is important when you're dealing with blood vessels. For example, let's say if this is a blood vessel and there is, uh, let's say some plaque buildup. Let me use a different color. So let's say you have cholesterol in your blood arteries. And let's say that the radius 
of this blood vessel is one centimeter. Let's just pick a number. And now in this area, it's 0.5. So the cross-sectional radius has been reduced by a factor of two. So if the pressure difference is the same, then the volume flow rate is now going to be one half raised to the fourth power, which means that it's going to be reduced by a factor of 16. So if you decrease the cross-sectional radius, the volume flow rate decreases. And so in order to maintain a constant volume flow rate, you have to increase the pressure difference by a factor of 16. And so that puts more work on your heart, which means that the heart has to work a lot harder to maintain the volume flow rate. It has to increase the pressure difference across this particular uh, blood vessel. And that's not good. So a lot of cholesterol in your diet has a negative impact on your heart. And you can see that with Poisier's law. Now, to overcome this, or to basically increase the volume flow rate, what you could do is increase the temperature. Whenever you increase the temperature of a fluid, the coefficient of viscosity decreases. And so the fluid has less resistance towards flow. And as the coefficient of the viscosity decreases, that's inversely related to the volume flow rate. So the volume flow rate is going to increase. So for example, if you compare cold honey and warm honey, warm honey can flow down an incline a lot faster than cold honey because the temperature is higher. And so some people, they always like to have a hot beverage in the morning. And uh, some folks like it hot as possible. Whenever you can increase the temperature of the fluids in your body, then you can increase the volume flow rate through the blood vessels. So now let's work on this problem. Water has a coefficient of viscosity of 0 0.001 pascals times seconds at 20 degrees Celsius. What pressure difference is necessary to keep water moving with a volume flow rate of 0 0.015 cubic meters per second through a 3 meter long pipe with a radius of 2 centimeters? So let's draw a picture. So we have a radius of 2 centimeters, and the length of the pipe is 3 meters. Let's call this point A and point B. We need to calculate the pressure difference between these two points. And the volume flow rate, Q, is 0 0.015 cubic meters per second. So we know that Q is equal to pi r raised to the fourth power times the pressure difference divided by 8 eta times L. So let's isolate delta P. So let's multiply both sides by the denominator of the right side. So we have 8 Q times eta times L, and that's equal to pi r to the fourth power times delta P. So now let's divide both sides by pi r to the fourth power. And so the pressure difference is going to be 8 times the volume flow rate times the coefficient of viscosity times the length of the pipe divided by pi r to the fourth power. So let's plug in the information that we have. So the volume flow rate is 0 0.015. The coefficient of viscosity is 0 0.001 at 20 degrees Celsius. And the length of the pipe is 3 meters. And then we need to divide it by pi times the radius to the fourth power. And the radius is 2 centimeters, which is 0 0.02 meters. So go ahead and type this in your calculator. So the pressure difference is 716.2 pascals. So let's understand what this means. 
So I'm going to round that to 716. So let's say if we have a very long pipe. Let's call this point A, point B, point C, D, and E. And the distance between each of these points, let's say it's 3 meters, which was the length that we used in the last problem. And let's say that the pressure at point A is 9,000 pascals. Now the pressure difference for water flowing in this particular pipe with a cross section radius of 2 centimeters, we said it's 716.2 pascals, but let's say 716. So as the water flows, the pressure is going to decrease by 716 pascals if it's flowing in this direction. If it's flowing in the opposite direction, then it's going to like increase towards the right. But in the direction that it's flowing, it's going to decrease in that direction. So at point B, the pressure is going to be 9,000 minus 716. So every 3 meters, the pressure is going to decrease by 716. So at point C, the pressure is now 7,568 pascals. And at point D, it's 6,852 pascals. And at point E, it's going to decrease even further. Until it comes to a stop. So friction, which opposes motion, let's call friction F. Notice that because of friction, the pressure is decreasing along the pipe. Now let's move on to number two. Engine oil with a coefficient of viscosity of 0.2 pascals times seconds flows through a 5 meter long pipe with a radius of 5 centimeters and a pressure difference of 95,000 pascals. Calculate the volume flow rate and mass flow rate in this pipe. So let's draw a picture. So we have a 5 meter long pipe, or at least 5 meters between the two points of interest, and a cross-sectional radius is 5 centimeters. And we have a pressure difference of 95,000 pascals. To find the volume flow rate, it's going to be pi times the radius to the fourth power times the difference in pressure divided by 8 times eta times L. So it's pi times the radius, which is 5 centimeters divided by 100, or 0 0.05 meters. The pressure difference is 95,000 pascals. And the coefficient of viscosity is 0.2. And the length of the pipe is 5 meters. So we just got to plug these numbers in. So the volume flow rate is 0.233 meters, cubic meters per second. So now that we have the volume flow rate, how can we calculate the mass flow rate? Mass is density times volume. So the mass flow rate is going to be the density of the fluid times the volume flow rate. The density is 720 kilograms per cubic meter. And the volume flow rate is 0.233 cubic meters per second. So the unit cubic meters will cancel. So let's take our answer and multiply it by 720. And so this is going to be about 168 kilograms per second. So that's the mass flow rate of the fluid in this pipe. Number three. A pressure difference of 50,000 pascals is needed to maintain a constant volume flow rate of 0 0.025 cubic meters per second. Calculate the power required to achieve this. So what should we do in this problem? So what is the formula for power? You know that power is the ratio between work and time. And work is force times displacement. 
Now what I'm going to do is multiply the top and the bottom by the area. A over A is 1, so I can do that. Whenever you multiply something by 1, the value of that something does not change. Now what I'm going to do is take A and move it to the bottom of F. So power is force divided by area times displacement times area over T. Now volume is area times height. Area is in square meters, height is in meters, and volume is in cubic meters. And the height is basically the vertical displacement. So we can say that volume is area times displacement. So I'm going to replace this with V. And force over area is pressure. So I have pressure times the volume divided by T. Delta V over delta T is the volume flow rate, which is represented by the symbol Q. So power is pressure times the volume flow rate. Now we have the pressure is 50,000 pascals, and we have the volume flow rate. So the pressure difference is 50,000, which is newtons per square meter, that's 1 pascal, and the volume flow rate, that's 0 0.025 cubic meters per second. So the power is going to be 1250 watts. The units that we have left over is newtons times meters per second. Newtons times meters, force times displacement, that's a joule. And so it's joules of a second, which is a watt.